Well, howdy, YouTube friends. We're here to talk today about the Sete 270. This is the 270, not the 270 WI, which is the weighted one. This is time adjusted. As you can see, Sete 7 in Italian. Ta da! This is an entry level espresso grinder. You could also use it for pour over. I originally bought it and intended to use it for both pour over and espresso, thinking that I would switch between the two, and you certainly can, but it's not exactly an easy thing. You know, dialing it back in and everything and purging when you switch the grind sizes. So I decided to stick with this with just espresso and get myself a hand grinder for the occasional pour overs. If you're somebody that sticks to espresso for a long chunk of time and then switch to pour over and then switch back for and like for long periods of time, then yeah, this could be something that you could use for both. Otherwise, I would just stick to espresso in this case. It has a 275 gram hopper with a little bit of a tint, so it's supposed to help with UV protection, but I couldn't find any information on if this was UVA, UVB protected and which of the UV rays is the one that's really making your coffee degrade, but either way, once it's out of the bag generally and there's more in contact with oxygen, that's when it degrades a little bit, but I wouldn't, I don't know, I don't worry about stuff like that. I've read some people that go really crazy about espresso, but I'm not to that point. And for my own sanity, that is perfectly fine for me. The hopper comes apart, you can detach it, you can easily open it, and then there's a whoop, and then there's a little latch to allow you to and there's like a safety guard, so the, it won't turn on until you've until you've turned it all and everything. Uh, if you just put it in, you forget to turn it, it won't turn on. You have to really close it back here and then you can reopen it. So if you want to swap your coffees in and out, it's easy to do that. Although there'll still be a little bit left in there. Like I said, this is entry level. So this clocks in at $3.99 US and $5.79 Canadian. I'll leave some product links down below. So the general consensus is that the, the grinder is more important than the espresso machine and making good espresso. So the grinder would be half of your espresso machine cost. That's not kind of what I did, but this works fine so far. It's good for a beginner one. That's why I got this and I'll be able to upgrade after this. So the burrs in here are 40 millimeter conical steel burrs. So nothing that fancy, not the biggest burrs, conical. So you're hoping to have a little bit less retention, but either way, still a good idea to purge after you make any changes. You have your fine to coarse grind setting, you have 31 lines, and then you have a stepless micro adjustment here. So you got your macro adjustment up here and your micro. And the confusing thing is that are not in the same direction. Probably makes sense though, how the burrs work. And what I do not love with this grinder, however, is that the lines and this little dial do not line up very well. And I've written Baratza about this and they said, yeah, it's really just more of a, um, guideline to kind of gauge where your line is. So if you're trying to take notes, sometimes it's really in between the two and you're not quite sure which number it is. Is it nine? Is it 10? Who knows? But I guess it doesn't really matter. Whenever you make the adjustments here, if you're going coarser, you generally don't have to do it while you are grinding. But if you go finer, you'll definitely want to make that adjustment while you're grinding because you don't want to put too much pressure on the burrs and break your machine. But either way, if you want to be sure to adjust while you're grinding, a stepless one, you don't have to. And just purge a little bit so that you're getting the right grind size in your cup or your, in your portafilter or in your um, little dispensing cup. So what does that mean? Well, on a smaller 40 millimeter burr without getting too into details, a bigger burr, if you're wondering on espresso machines, a bigger burr is better in the sense that it can distribute heat better on, uh, on the grinder. So if you're grinding a lot of espresso, for example, then the beans are not getting cooked, if you will, in that process because of the heat of the, everything and the friction can dissipate. If you're just doing like one or two cups and then there's time in between, then I don't think that's something that you would worry on this. Uh, in general, it's not something I really worry about anyway. I don't think I could taste those nuances. There's like, there's also nuances on conical burrs versus flat burrs and how it cuts the grains and, and then surface area that it extracts and how that tastes. And I, I'm i not there at all in my espresso game and I don't think I ever will be. And it's steel, so it'll last a lot longer than ceramic. And there's also a bunch of other literature in regards to ceramic versus steel. So that's just a quick, quick, quick little cap, recap of, of what, that, what all, that all means to you, basically. As I said, this is a lower entry model, pretty much the cheapest that you can get for an espresso grinder. With time, 
and this I think this happens with every grinder from a red red as as the burrs get used up a little bit and as they get like seasoned there'll be more space between the two and then you'll have to adjust so it does come with tools and two shims I already have one in here after a few weeks of using it and when you put these in it's very easy to take it out like this and clean it as well and when you take it out you stick in the shim and then it'll bring the burrs closer together so then your adjustment will change again so in terms of uh, in terms of keeping track of this, it's gonna change with time. You have to keep playing with your espresso. You can't just like leave it, plug and play and have a setting and that's it. But I believe that's the case with every grinder that with time, just with this one, it seems to be a little bit more so because to get that lower price came with some sacrifices in construction and build and all of that. It comes with this little brush to clean, it's quite a hard bristle brush. But I find that you can also repurpose an old painting brush or makeup brush in my case. Give it a good cleaning, of course, and get those grinds out. And it's very easy to take it out. There's a little arrow right here. You pull it out, tons of instructions online on how to do it. It's also very good to clean it out every four to six weeks about to give it a good cleaning, get all of the grains out and the burrs and so, you know, keep it running nice and smooth. There are espresso cleaning tablets that you can buy. I'll leave the links down below as well. But generally from what I've seen is that's not necessarily the best. I mean, if, it, if you need to get rid of a lot of oils, that would be good anyway. I don't generally go for really oily beans. Just don't wanna get any issues with any of my machines. Something that I've read with those tablets, it is sometimes difficult to really get them fully out once you're grinding and cleaning and everything and cleaning them. It might take a lot of rounds and wasted coffee beans to get them out. So. I haven't done that yet, but I've only had this grinder for two to three months up to now. One thing with the design that I didn't love is that it's a little bit difficult to butt this against the wall uh, because of this cord here. I feel like it's a bit of strain, but I can generally put it up quite against the wall. On a design standpoint, I don't really love the design. I find it looks a bit too modern, but that's just an aesthetic thing. That's my aesthetic uh, preference. Like I like the niche zero, but a lot of people really seem to not like the design of that. And I love that design. I think it looks really cool. So, I mean, that's not really why I'm getting, getting the grinder. Like it's obviously nice and fits in my setting, but it's not the primary case in this situation, especially with I'm dealing with the lower budget. You have a little uh, catcher, grain catcher that's down here. That's easy to clear out. Then you have your portafilter holder right here with a little um, tab to keep it in place. You can adjust this height, of course, with the tools that they give you. You can also, if you push in and push out, you can now put this here for pour over or if you like grinding your espresso in here and then putting it in manually for whatever reason. It's a pretty noisy grinder, but it doesn't last very long. It grinds pretty quickly and it creates nice fluffy grinds. If you're in a one bedroom condo or an open concept loft, yeah, you might wake somebody up with that. Gr you can grind manually as well as programmed. You turn on the grinder, you have three settings that are preset for time. If you long press the play pause button, uh, it's like a music thing, volume, play, pause, stop. Hmm. They could have made it, called it like Sete Musica. If you long press this, it goes into P and that's manual mode. Uh, not sure why P, P program, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, anyway, but P is manual mode and you can just keep pressing and, and then weighing and that's how I've been doing it so far because I keep changing coffees and I'm still not really an expert in it. So I'm very, very hands-on so far, but eventually if I find some coffees that I really, really like and come back to, I could time program them and you have three of them and you can increase or decrease your time and play with all those adjustments and it auto shuts off. I don't know what the time frame is, but it just shuts off on its own, which is great. So I always just turn it on, use it, and then just leave it and it turns off. Although I don't think it really consumes a lot of power when it's not grinding itself. I don't know about the detail of like grind uniformity. I haven't noticed anything out of line. So uh, I'm not James Hoffman. I won't be able to dissect the grinds and like stare at them. And I don't have the, uh, the grind size ruler, but I did, Note a couple of things, which I took in my little coffee notebook. My little notebook with coffee. When you change your coffees, just know that you're gonna have to change the timing on this. That's why it's good to have multiple settings. And what I mean by that is that no coffee beans are alike, even if you get the same farm working with different roasters, if they play with the roasting level, that will change things in the coffee. 
and the coffee bean. So what I've noticed is that when you have a darker roast, it is a bit more messy. So that is something to be mindful. You could have a dosing funnel, something like that to help you with that. Or you could grind it to here and then pour it in. So when it's a darker roast, what I've noticed, and it's all science and I've confirmed this with, with reading up on the internet about this, is that the grind time will be less. So if it's a darker roast, it's a less dense bean, the grind time will be less, and there's more solubles that you can extract, and the extraction time would be less. But ultimately, yes, if you have a darker roast, when it comes to grinding, you'll have lower density in that bean, and it'll, the grind time will also be less. And just know that that won't apply anymore because I was noticing with my lighter roast that the grind time would be a lot longer, and it was something between a medium roast and a light roast, it was something between like 5.78 for 18 to 19 grams on the dark roast and something like 7 point something or 8 point something for the um, lighter roast. And I'm not giving you those numbers to give you indications of, okay, that's the amount of time I have to do. You'll figure that out by doing in the in the manual mode and then programming yourself here. I'm just giving you that, that, that idea just so you can understand the difference because it's like, oh, that's, so actually a little bit longer and I, I wasn't sure if I was really off the mark, but I noticed that and then I looked into it and I was like, okay, that's actually just how it is. So it's very interesting, the difference between those two. Also, when the coffee gets a bit older, you have to grind a little bit finer. There's all of these tips and tricks. I'm not gonna get into that because that becomes the whole like coffee grinding experience. But just if you're new to this, I'll just some paths and avenues for you to look into. And that is my review of the Barazza Sete 270. If you have this grinder, I'd like to hear your opinion on it, if you like it, if you've had the upgrade to Titus, is that how you say it? Upgrade to Titus? That a lot of people do have in the espresso world and buying all the gadget, gadgets and gizmos and bops. And if you don't have it, are you considering getting this? Would this be your first grinder? It's definitely been quite an experience using this grinder. So I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear in the comments below. Let me know what your opinions are. If you like it, do you do you like this design? I don't know. I'm still like iffy about if I love this design or not. And um, or maybe you have a suggestion. If if I were to upgrade, where should I go from here? Really looking at the Niche Zero, it's got great reviews. The single dosing. I don't know if that'd be a little bit annoying with time. Although that's kind of what I'm doing at this point. I am single dosing. I'm weighing each time. So. Um, that is what I'm doing. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.